Hey everybody, sorry about taking so long to get back with you on part three. In the first two videos of installing this ATC spindle in one of my machines, basically it's a swap out for a similar power spindle. I just talked and pointed and really didn't do anything. In this video I'm going to try and make an air manifold so that I can hook up all the regulators and valves and so on that are necessary to operate this thing. These are various projects I'm working on in the shop, either for myself or for um, business improvement. And let me just take a quick picture of those so I can copy them back up there when I'm done. And then uh, let's clear this off so that we can talk about today's project. I could just go out and buy a whole bunch of brass fittings or a whole bunch of steel fittings and bolt this all together, but it'd be rather ungainly. And to be honest, if I buy fittings locally, they get to be kind of expensive. So what I'm going to do is make an aluminum manifold, just take a piece of aluminum and machine it out and tap it. And I'm going to have, and I need outputs for um, releasing the tool for uh, returning the air cylinder, for cleaning the, um, uh, the back of the new tool holder that's being installed, and for an air seal in the spindle. So that's four outputs. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a manifold with a hole. Okay, let's stop right here. I had a whole bunch of things go wrong with my plan. I'll go ahead and show you the video of me hacking out a quick and dirty air manifold, but I had to change my whole approach to the project. You may not want to make the part that I did. It's huge and unnecessary. I started with a block of aluminum to make an air manifold. And this is the air manifold I made. That's what I have. All right. It was drilled up this way, and the plan is, and still is, to put a ball valve right here on the bottom of this on a nipple, a little handle, so if I ever do get any moisture past everything else into the manifold, I can drain it right there. I hope I never get any moisture in here. And then coming in here with our source air was supposed to be a filter regulator and a solenoid valve. Out here was a regulator and it goes directly to the air seal on the spindle. Anytime the machine is powered up this valve is open and there will be air blowing through the air cylinder on uh, air seal on the spindle. Then this was supposed to go to a de-duster with a regulator and a solenoid valve uh, to be operated remotely with a button. And then this was supposed to be to the general ATC mechanism with a four-way solenoid valve and it's already regulated to the correct pressure for it here. Well, that went out the window. The electric solenoid valve I wanted to use here doesn't seem to work, so I'm going to use a manual four-way valve here. If I use a manual four-way valve here, I don't want to use an electric valve here because then I would have to actuate the manual valve manually and press the button that actuates this at the same time. And I wouldn't have a third hand free to actually change the tool. So we're going to change all of that. First off, I never needed two ports 
for the ATC. I only needed one because it goes to a four-way valve. So we're going to plug this port. And then I want to actuate the D-duster with the same valve that I actuate the ATC mechanism. So we're going to plug this port. And then because of the way I'm going to actually have to lay it out on the machine so that all of the airlines go where they need to go and don't uh, get in the way of opening doors or whatever I need to do in order to use the machine, I'm going to bring things in a little differently. I'm going to bring the source air in here. Um, that'll have, you know, the filter re regulator and the valve. That'll be at around 80 PSI because that's what the ATC mechanism requires. And I'm thinking I may uh, plug this one and use this one. It doesn't really matter. It's gonna when I get on the machine and start running airlines, I'll figure it out. Anyway, this one will go to a regulator that's going to be at a, between 29 and 36 psi, and it's going to go directly to the air seal. And anything, any, any time that the machine is powered up, there will be air going through the air seal on the spindle. When I power up the machine, there will be a power supply on, as part of the machine that will activate this solenoid valve. And this will be pressurized, and there will be air blowing through the air seal. Now this goes to the ATC and the D-duster. And I'll show you how that's going to work. The four-way manual valve looks something like this. It's got a little plunger handle here on the front. You push it in or pull it out depending on what you want it to do. Air comes in here on the bottom. There's an exhaust port here, an exhaust port here. There's an A and a B outlet port up here. And what happens is when this valve or this port is connected through to the source air, this port is connected through to ex exhaust, and when this one is connected through to the source air, this one is connected through to its exhaust. As you can see, the shuttle moves back and forth to divert the air, divert the, air the way you want it. So I'm going to probably wind up using this valve with all of the airlines running to the front of the machine instead of using the uh, valve that I wanted to use. Pretend that's an awesome drawing of an air cylinder. When air is going to this port, it pushes the air cylinder down, which pushes on the end of the drawbar for the tool. When it's switched, air goes here and forces the air cylinder to retract. But I also, whenever it's pushed down, like yay, whenever there's air pushing the, the air cylinder down and retracting the tool, there's also a port on the spindle that we'll say there, there's a drawbar mechanism here and down here is where the tool's held. Okay, there's a port on up here, well, on the top of the spindle that blows air out through here to make sure there are no chips on the on the back of the tool that's being installed all right it, there's just a continuous air blast when at the same time as this so what we're going to do is we're just going to put a t or a y in this line and go to another regulator that'll be 43 to 58 psi that 
causes this air blast. So, when, so simultaneously, when I activate the air cylinder to release the tool, it will also go through a regulator and put an air blast through the end of the spindle to make sure there are no chips on the tool that's being installed. Here I'm just doing a quick and dirty rough layout for the original plan on this manifold.
you're asking, how am I going to drill all of that with a little stubby drill bit? I'm not. I'm just going to start the hole with this little stubby drill bit. Dang it, five CNC mills in the shop, and I'm sitting here making this part by hand. Uh, I'm gonna have to turn down the speed for that, I think. Oh my. That's plenty deep enough to tap that for a uh, uh, quarter inch NPT pipe thread. I think I am going to finish all the side holes back on the drill press. This part should go a bit easier.
before anybody freaks out about the missing side cover on this little belt sander, uh, it's around here somewhere, but it broke and it won't stay on the machine anymore. All right. Yep, not sharp. I won't cut myself now when I'm putting everything together. Now to go tap all those holes. What fun! This vise was moving a little bit when I was drilling that hole earlier. So I'm going to reposition it slightly. Tighten up the clamps. set this up to tap it. Now hand tapping pipe taps is not a huge deal, but it's enough of a pain in the butt that if I was doing larger holes, I'd probably do it with spiral interpolation on one of the uh, CNC mills with a single form thread mill. All right, I'm back. Quarter inch NPT pipe tap out here in this toolbox somewhere. I think I just hit the uh, camera with the uh, toolbox drawer. Sorry about that. The sudden movements can't be good for anybody with motion sickness. I think this is the heaviest tap handle I have and it won't fit the handle. And the doesn't fit. I actually prefer to use a wrench, a, a regular wrench because they're thin. See that's a 7 16 and that's a 7 16 They're thin enough that I can put two of them on there. You might think that's crazy. But once you get to a certain point and you're fighting it, it helps you keep it straight because you're doing it with both hands at once. If I used a crescent wrench or a vice grip plier, I would only be able to put force on one side of the tap and it would be much harder to keep it straight in the hole. So by using a regular opened end wrench, they're thin enough that I can put two of them on there. I don't want to tap that too deep because if I do and I go to put a fitting in there, it might bottom out without the uh, taper of the thread seating up very well. This isn't the actual fitting that's going to go in that hole, but it's the same size. And what I want it to do is go about halfway in and get stiff so I know that those threads will seal. Yeah, it could probably stand to be a little deeper. Once I've done one, I can just look at it and compare.
this is a mock-up or rough assembly of how all of the connections are going to go. Starting out with the air going into the setup. Right here this line is going to be shop air. And that comes off of a filter dryer. Right here is a solenoid valve that uh, powers up whenever the machine powers up. And then here is the main regulator. That'll be at about 80 PSI. Uh, my cheat sheet says somewhere between 72 and 87 PSI. So we're just going to call it roughly 80 PSI. Then it, the air goes into the manifold, and it's going to come out in two locations. First off, I've got this port plugged over here. And then down here we'll have a pipe nipple that isn't here yet. that will allow us to connect to this drain valve that we hope to never have to use. Alright, this port goes out to the four-way valve that goes to the tool release. At the full 80 PSI coming off this regulator. And then this regulator should be set at, my notes say, 43 to 58 PSI, so I'll probably set it at about 50 PSI. And then this line goes to, this line right here goes to the D-duster. This line goes to Tool Retract. Then this one here, this regulator, should be set at around, well again my notes say 29 to 36 uh, PSI, so I'm going to probably go about 30 PSI. And this line right here goes to the air seal. Now you may notice that right here There's a, uh, it's just sitting there. That's because I've got some T's coming in to connect that in, and that should come in tomorrow. And that's basically it. That's what I spent all that time doing. And now that it's laid out like this, it doesn't look all that complicated.